Okay, I'm back, and I actually got some light on, you know, just in case it gets a bit too dark. So, yeah. Attack on Titan Shingeki no Kyojin, episode 22. This was a very, very emotional episode. Deals with the aftermath of, you know, fighting against the female Titan, and yeah. So, as you've already seen, um, Levi and Mikasa uh, have actually teamed up to um, fight the female Titan and rescue Eren. The first part of the moment was, like, action, and it was, like, freaking awesome. I mean, Mikasa was supposed to distract the female Titan, and then uh, Levi was supposed to go in and, you know, like, slice the Titan up and try to rescue Eren, which they did, but it did have some repercussions at the end. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. The Levi, freaking Levi was badass. I mean, seriously, when the t female Titan was, like, going in for the punch, he started spinning around like I saw, going all the way up her arm, and then up the face, stabbed her in the eyes. That was Freaking badass! That was... Ah! I loved it! I mean, Levi was one of my favorite characters. I don't know how you can make this guy even more awesome. I guess this is what happens when you, like, um, go through so much emotion, so much feelings, that you can't put the, push them aside and, you know, go for the uh, main objective. I, that's something that Erwin and Levi can do, apparently. Because, because Mikasa actually saw her weak spot, the female Titan's weak spot, and she thought, hey, I can finally go in for the kill, but surprise, surprise, it was a freaking trap because um, she was about to get slammed by the female Titan, but she was saved by Levi. Unfortunately, Levi's ankle broke, and, you know, even with his leg broken, he was still able to, like, slice the female Titan's jaw and get Eren out. He was, he was encased in this cocoon of Titan's... Titan saliva it was kind of gross, but he's still able to rescue him. And he, don't get me wrong, I mean, I think Levi did most of the work, and Levi was freaking badass because even though he wanted, I know he wanted to kill the female Titan, especially what he did to his comrades, but because of the crystal armor, they couldn't. But the thing is, we saw like Levi apparently can go so fast, she barely had time to, you know, like regenerate or to use that crystal armor. So I'm like, if he's that fast, I mean, couldn't they have, like, like, killed her right then and there? But I guess they gotta focus on the main objective, and that's what Levi did. Unfortunately, that's what Mikasa didn't do, and... Actually, that's actually one of her, like, weaknesses, I think. It's because of her, like, love for Eren. Sometimes it could cloud her judgment or focus on the mission. And we have to get back to the Recon Corpse. Uh, they've been gathering all the dead corpses as much as they could gather from, yeah, Recon Corpse. Okay, apparently they're calling them Survey Corpse. I, so I don't know if I can, like, call them Recon Corpse or Survey Corpse. I'm still gonna call them Recon because they've, that's how been... That's how it was um, translated before. So, Recon Corp, sorry guys. They've gathered as many um, dead bodies from their former comrades that have been killed by the Titans. However, there were some they couldn't retrieve, and this guy named Dieter said that he wanted to go and retrieve one of them. His name was Ivan. But Erwin ordered them not to because they're going to be labeled missing, his action, missing in action because, I mean, according to Levi, if you saw them dead, that's enough. Dead is dead either way. We actually had some like moments between, you know, conversations between uh, Sasha and Connie and then um, Jean and Armin. They were talking about, you know, about death and how they keep thinking about how they would die or how their others would die or how long will they stay alive until the next time. It was a bit depressing, but I really want to see more of these characters. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of them. Well, we've seen some of them, but not like all of them in like part one actually we did see in part one most of the time but we didn't actually get a lot on their backstories here because we focused a lot on um the survey corpse recon corpse i, I don't know how they call it but uh, you know if they're making a season two i hope that we get to see more of these guys and learn more about them so they were about to head off back into inside the walls then we had to as if this anime cannot get any more depressing they have to like rub it in by showing us all the families, well, minus Petra's families, of Olo, er Eldo, and Gunther, and you know how they're saying that, oh, they're coming back, and it seems like they were happy, but they didn't, like, they didn't act like they were. Uh, it was, it was, like, downright depressing, just knowing what they're gonna, they're, what they're gonna learn once they get back. But then, um, before that, and I heard that this part was filler. Actually, to be honest, I heard that some of this episodes were filler. Not from the manga, but I don't know, like, which parts were. Apparently, Dieter, the freaking idiot, but then again, I can understand why, but then again, he was a freaking idiot because he and one of his friends had to go back and save Ivan's corpse. 
they lured two titans and one of them was like walking weird like this and because of that they lured even more titans and one of them was actually walking like this yeah it was, it was freaking weird but whatever like, either way it was futile in the end because even though they got um the corpse of ivan back uh the titans were about to attack the recon corpse but they only managed to attack one of their friends and Dieter was about to die, but it was saved by Mikasa. Yay, Mikasa. So they had, like, one additional casualty into the list. And in the end, all the corpses had to be dropped off because they had to lighten the load to get away from the Titans because they couldn't fight them because there were, like, no tall trees. They couldn't use their 3D maneuver gears at all in open spaces. One of the corpses that we saw that had to be dropped off was Petra. Fucking Pet Petra. I mean... Ugh. This episode, don't get me wrong, this episode was good because of the emotionals, the emotional things going on, but god damn, did we have to see Petra's corpse? That was freaking sad. And not only that, but the look on Levi's face. You know, he, he, you know he felt something. He, he felt something when he saw uh, Petra's corpse being dropped off like that. It's just... I don't know if like I think maybe Levi probably has some feelings for Petra, especially what was explained later on. My God! Yeah, thanks to Dieter, like one additional casualty on the list. All the corpses were not going to be brought back for like a proper burial or something, or give closure to their loved ones because they all have to be dropped off, so they have to escape the Titans. And in the end, he lost Ivan's corpse either way. And you know, I thought Levi was gonna like slap him but you know what no he didn't because he gave the crest the wings of freedom crest to Dieter and he he lied to him saying that it was Ivan's you know he just said that so he could give him closure you know why because that was Petra's crest that was Petra's and he and he gave that to him so that he can get some closure instead of you know Levi getting closure. That's that's how great Levi is. I mean, he can be harsh at times, but I'm not gonna lie. But he does show a sense of humanity every now and then whenever it's necessary. That's what I really love about him. Not only that, but he's freaking badass when he fights. Oh, by the way, Aaron was awake, and we had this like vision of uh, flashback of episode one for some reason. Anyway, Aaron was awake. He learned about what happened. Uh, the, you know, the mission was a failure. Fuck you, female titan. Ugh. So they went back inside the walls. It's just like, it's just like a reenacting of episode one. When, um, the Recon Corpse came back. Except this time Eren and Mikasa were in it. And they actually had, like, a little boy and a little girl re kind of representing them in a way. But as a new generation. And that kid... The kid, he, he, he thought they were awesome, even though they were beaten down. He said that they could still continue to fight. And, you know, Aaron, Aaron, when he saw this, he's like, oh, God, this is... He was like, he, he couldn't take it, and he's, then he starts to cry. A lot of the people in the crowd said some things that were pretty harsh. Like, the guy who mentioned about a waste of taxpayers' money. These guys have not seen the outside world, and these guys are trying to risk their lives to learn about the Titans, fighting them in the outside world, making a difference. But then again, if you put yourself in the shoes of the people inside the walls, I mean, some of these people have loved ones in the Recon Corps, and they're going outside risking their lives. Some of these loved ones are probably dead to these people, and they they probably can't take more, take any more of it, and all this killing, all these deaths. That's why they're incredibly pissed, and I can understand like, why they're saying this. I mean, it's kind of like when you think about it in the real world. I mean... I know that there's probably wars going on in this world. I mean, and there are people out there who have loved ones fighting in this war as soldiers. Part of the army, the marines, the air forces, wherever you want to call it. And I'm assuming that these guys probably, probably hope and pray that they will come back alive. Unfortunately, some of those people will not, and the families of those that don't come back, they, they probably feel it really hard. So that's what I think. That's why I cannot hate the people inside the walls because, I mean, when they're yelling about the senseless deaths, all the deaths and, and you know, getting killed by the Titans, I mean, if you think about it in their shoes and also think about it, like, if this kind of also applies to, like, the real world, if, you know, if, you know, no, knowing that there are wars going on in the real world, I'm pretty sure there are at the moment. So I cannot be angry at them, but I was angry at the one guy saying, Oh, it's a waste of taxpayers' money. 
I mean, I'm pretty sure that's the same guy who said that in episode one. I mean, the scene at the end, just seeing them, you know, going on the walk of shame and just like, all these depressed faces. By the way, I gotta give kudos to the animation in this, the soundtrack, even at the end, that, that, sound, that sad song, like on the piano, I'm like, wow, this, this really was sad. And, you know, to make matters worse, Petra's dad shows up. Petra's dad. Oh my god. He said that Petra gave him a letter and it mentioned that he, she was gonna devote herself to Levi and... Oh my Jesus fucking Christ. Petra's dad said that she was all starry-eyed over Levi and hinting, actually pretty much confirming that Petra loved Levi, even though Olo loved Petra, but in the end, unrequited love sucks, I guess. Poor Olo. And poor Petra. Okay, so the sun is finally shining out, so I didn't have to turn on the lamp. So, the look on Levi's face. You know he's feeling like shit when, he's, when Petra's dad was talking about her. You know that he's feeling something. He's feeling a sense of dread or regret or internal sadness. But then when he gets a Erwin squad, he's getting yelled at of all the pointless deaths that have been going on. All the how many more people have to die. And you also get a look on his face and um... Well, he's burying a heavy burden right there, and I'm guessing that it's a lot for him to take. But according to the narration at the end of the episode, the Commander Erwin is being called into the inner walls. I'm assuming Walsina? Yeah, to the higher ops. And they're ordered to take Eren away. I'm like, what are they going to do to Eren? Granted, he did his very best to at least fight, but... I don't think he's done anything wrong. He did try to fight, but he did get himself captured. But uh, still, I think he didn't do anything wrong. In next week's episode, from the preview, we see Annie. And I know a lot of you guys are going to be really pissed. I know I was. And we get to see this other character, this other girl. I don't know who she is, but why do I get the feeling that I'm not going to like her? I don't know, but anyway, Annie is going to be with a group from the um, Inner Walls to escort Erwin and Eren and the others into Walsina, I'm assuming. That's where they're going. And then Armin shows up and he's asking Annie for doing something really important. Does this mean that we're finally going to get the reveal of the female Titan's identity? Because I think this has been going on long enough. I think well, we already know who the female titan is. I mean, if you don't know, then, then okay, you might be a bit surprised, but there have been so many hints throughout these episodes. I think it's pretty obvious who it is, and, you know, I just hope they reveal it to get it over with, so, um, yeah. Overall, this episode was really, really good. Very emotional, very sad. It really, it was really tugged on my heartstrings a lot. Um, great animation, great soundtrack, as always. And, you know, if the, if some of the stuff was actually filler, then they know how to do filler right. So, yeah, that's all I gotta say about this week's episode of Attack on Titan, Shingeki no Kyojin, episode 22, and when it's problem 27, and now if you excuse me, I gotta go for find something to watch to get over this sad episode. It was a really sad episode. I gotta find, I gotta find something to cheer me up. So, bye.